Hello and welcome. Uh, we are about to watch the uh, first of a three-part tutorial about how to create a small-scale environment. Uh, by small-scale environment, I, uh, I mean not a large landscape with lots of, uh, of uh, distant objects, but small objects closer to the camera that need more details. Something a bit similar uh, to this scene I made a while ago, which I called a waterhole. Maybe not with the leopard, but you you see what I mean by small scale environment. Uh, this is part one. I will divide it in three parts because otherwise it will make uh, the tutorial a bit too too long. And this first part is uh, dedicated to terrain layout. We will use uh, the following software to uh, to make this. First, Cinema 4D, which you see displayed with an empty scene on the screen. Then uh, Octane Render, which I use at a renderer uh, generally. And then we'll use a software uh, dedicated uh, to terrain creation, which is uh, World Creator. Let's get started. First, we'll create a scene. I've got an empty scene here. And we'll create our terrain on a plane. Uh, small scale terrain, I think 50 meters in every direction will be enough. Let's move the camera. And then uh, this terrain we will displace um, with a Cinema 4D displacer and then add uh, Octane Render displacement. This is different uh, from the technique I used on another tutorial. Um, that uses only octane render displacement. In order to enable displacement, we'll need to add segments to the terrain. Let's go for 400 for every direction. And maybe display shading lines. We have our displacement ready. We do not need uh, too many details because this will only give us the outline of the terrain. Then we need to, uh, to create the terrain itself. Uh, I will not use uh, the uh, uh, Cinema 4D landscape or a, uh, or a noise. I will use a terrain created specifically in World Creator. So here is World Creator. This is a uh, uh, version uh, um, release candidate 14, the latest version, which dates back from the 25th of July. This is a, a small update of this program, which is constantly updated uh, by its creators. So uh, we'll the, define first the shape, uh, general shape of our, of our terrain here. To do so, I generally use the custom base shape. Uh, first, uh, the terrain width and length is at 2K, which is, will be probably enough for us. So we'll leave it at 2K. Then custom base shape, edit shape, and we want a uh, terrain with the uh, back slightly higher than the front in order to be uh, able to use it with the camera low and uh, hide the, the background. And then uh, we'll uh, create some sort of uh, river or small. Uh, water area in the middle so this kind of shape will be will do fine let's click done and then go to filters and let's add a first layer uh, we'll call it uh, river and uh, add filters to it I will use design filters uh, to create the river, I think. I, mm, both of them could be usable, but uh, I'll use uh, maybe a path. So we'll create a path from uh, the, this side to the front. Not really a path, but we'll use it for the river. So create a path and then edit path to um, add uh, some uh, uh, new points left shift plus mouse click
Okay, so now we have our path. It's not wide enough because we are on a small scale environment. So we adjust its width. You can move the points to create the terrain, to create the, uh, the river. It's not low enough because we need it to be low in order to put water on it. And maybe it's not smooth enough. Okay, we have the basic path. We can uh, widen it at some uh, points and get it a bit uh, narrower at others. Doesn't seem to be doing anything on the first point. So now let's add some noise. It doesn't look very good, but if you reduce the scale, okay, and then at the level step, the lower you go, the less. Uh, uh, detail there will be. I think we could go even lower. Okay, let's uh, stop editing the path. We have the basic shape of our terrain. Let's go to this scene and try with an ocean to see uh, how it looks with the water in it. So that's the water we want in this terrain. I think uh, this is a bit too steep and uh, not high enough here. So I'll go and change the uh, shape again. Okay, done, and go back to filters. We have our basic uh, our base shape. Uh, I think it will look nice when uh, seen from here. Maybe lower the ocean. Uh, so. Uh, Path could go even lower uh, with less smoothness uh, and lower the ocean. Okay. That should be okay. And uh, let's add another layer of filters then. Uh, let's call it erosion. And uh, let's add some filters here, some uh, erosion uh, fluvial filters. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. So it looks definitely better, maybe a bit too strong here. And then add a um, hills, uh, rocky bumpy hills. I think it should be before the erosion. And this one again is a bit strong. Okay. I think the terrain is a bit too steep here, so let's go back to the base and edit shape. Okay. 
done. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to handle this. Maybe it will be a dry and out uh, river with just a pool of water remaining. This would be easier to manage. And I think uh, this view will be will be fine. So now that we have a nice shape for our terrain, it's time to save and export it. So save project here and uh, we'll save it to a uh, specific directory which will um, which will take all the uh, the elements of the terrain. Mm. Riverside, let's call it Riverside and save it. So now as you can see from here it has saved the old terrain in one and uh, the old elements in one uh, di directory so we'll take our uh, exports from here we need now to export uh, our terrain we'll export it to a TIFF 16-bit and the terrain 8 map okay export and we'll export it to the same directory we used small scale terrain riverside 8 map what does it give us in uh, octane render let's import this terrain as a displacer for the plane so let's add a displacer here and import our 8th map, 8th map here. Okay, find it. No. So it's been displaced but very slightly. We have a 50 meter terrain. Uh, let's displace it by. 4 meter, 5, okay, 5 is better. Okay, now we have our terrain ready. Uh, let's adjust the daylight. As you can see, there's uh, artifacts on the, on the sides of the terrain, so we'll remove them by going back to the displacer shading mapping and remove the tile and this solved the problem uh, well okay ah there's a, a slight uh, issue with the, the recent um, uh, versions of the uh, world creator it uh, reverses the, the terrain so this one is uh, flipped uh, left to right, I think. So we need to flip X and then resave. And what I'm doing here is uh, going back and forth between World Creator and uh, Cinema 4D uh, will be uh, what we'll do for the next few minutes because uh, it's perfectly uh, possible to change things with this method. So if I just reload the image, I change my whole terrain. I flipped the axis. I just need to go out, and then we have the right uh, the right shape for our terrain. Let's place the camera around here. So now we have the basic outline of our terrain. The camera is roughly where we want it to be. 
uh, now we'll need to add some uh, details to this terrain and some uh, and prepare the uh, the part two of the, our work, which will be the surfacing. Uh, first, okay, let's write it that way. So, in order to prepare the surfacing, we'll go back to the world creator, remove the ocean and we'll need three surfaces basically one for the river bottom one for uh, basic uh, terrain which will uh, be uh, grass uh, around uh, the, the river and one for rocks on the sides of the river so let's go to textures and add a texture layer okay and add our first layer. The first layer, it doesn't matter really what you use uh, as textures, you can use the default stock textures. The, the idea is just to see where they are, uh, they will be on the, on the final terrain. So the first texture is the base one, which will be uh, the, for use for the grass uh, growing on the, um, on the sides of the river. So it will, uh, it will apply everywhere except where there are the other two. The second texture will be for stones uh, on the side of the river, so it uh, fills the whole area, but we'll adjust it. We want this texture only on uh, steep slopes. Okay. There are two methods uh, to restrain this, uh, these uh, to, to do this, either uh, use only steep slopes, which is what I'm doing right now, or another one which gives uh, good results is cavity. If you place your rocks only on concave uh, parts, and I think I will use this one uh, today, uh, you see it only appears on uh, on the areas where there would there could logically be rocks protruding from the uh, from the, um, the terrain, so I'll use this uh, this one. No real need to adjust. I think I'll just try a few things. Okay. Now we need another uh, another material to create the uh, the mud at the bottom of the river. Let's add some. Uh, Medi ground pedals and restrain its presence to uh, the uh, to the bottom of the terrain. Yes. Um, let's try to add some noise to break the uh, oh, first. Uh, Let's add some smoothness to the distribution and then uh, maybe some noise to break the uh, even uh, distribution of the noise of the textures in, in, uh, in eighth and okay. I'm just looking for a way to create large patches of uh, of noise here in order to avoid the regular look and uh, to avoid the uh, and reduce the octave and then uh, uh, That's okay for me. Now we have three different textures appearing on uh, different areas. This is a way to preview the distribution. Let's save the project. And uh, now we need to export the uh, distribution of these textures. It was it used to be handled here in this area, but now I think it's here. So textures. 
and we'll export it as uh, oops, not textures, surface. Uh, Oops, heat maps. Uh, select. Yeah, it, you you need to to export the heat maps. Otherwise, you will export the colors here, which we do not want because we'll not we won't use this these textures. Okay, so we'll export the heat maps uh, of these textures, and then uh, let's first rename them. You see the the, the tags. Let's call them, let's give them a proper name, mud, rocks, grass. Okay. And let's go back to the export. So, heat maps, textures, JPG. We need to flip the X axis because otherwise it won't work. And export. Uh, Okay, let's call them heat maps. Now we have normally our three heat maps here, JPEG files, and they have uh, they uh, represent the distribution of the different uh, textures. So the first one we'll handle is the mud. Uh, grass distribution. Simply create a new mix material and then let's create our. Oh, I'll create them from here. We need three diffuse materials. Octane diffuse, uh, this one will be mud and mud. Is of a brownish color. This one will be grass. Grass is green. Okay. And this one will be rocks. Rocks is gray. And then base terrain here and we'll use it to uh, for, to mix the different materials on the first layer what we'll do here is that we'll use a layered approach to uh, the surface of this terrain octane render does not allow uh, layers so we'll layer two terrains one on top of, of another to handle this the first terrain will be easy to uh, to, to create because we'll use the uh, the um, uh, mix on it and we'll mix a grass and a mud grass and mud to mix them and to use the to define the amount we'll use the uh, one of the heat maps we have exported which is the mud surface heat map. This is what we'll, we are going to, to do uh, to use them on here and of course it's the, the reverse so maybe we can invert it and we have the distribution of our grass and mud um, I think uh, the noise between those two could be a bit better so let's see how you can adjust it. We'll go to back to textures and to our noise distribution of the mud surface. So heat select, heat noise, heat noise. So scale and then a bit more smoothness and maybe uh, no it's not uh, going to work unless uh, unless 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 this might work if we duplicate the layer and then 
this one would be a regular layer and the second one will extend the uh, the mud to the uh, to the uh, hollow parts of the terrain this looks a bit better and now in order to uh, um, in order to make these uh, changes mm, I'm not sure it won't work because there are two layers here so we need really to have only one uh, let's remove this one we can only have one mud layer uh, I don't think it will be uh, we'll need to combine both of them uh, in uh, in oct uh, octane uh, afterwards so uh, switch back to this and uh, just reduce the eighth range make it fit a bit better the terrain and um, Let's try to adjust a few parameters. Let's now export it again. Oops, no, it's not splat map, it's heat maps for the mud tag. So normally it should have overwritten the uh, Previous use, previous heat map, and what we now need to do is just to reload, and it adjusts the uh, distribution map. Now we've done the easy part. Let's uh, let's do the um, the rocks. The rocks will be uh, placed on a on a different plane, and we'll. Uh, place it underneath the first one so that they just pop out in different areas so we'll create another plane called rocks and we'll apply the rock texture to it and it appears everywhere so it's not really what we want now what we'll do here is that we'll adjust the displacer we want the displacer to show rocks only where they should appear which is on areas that were defined by this heat map okay so instead of using a heat map just as an image we'll use a layer we'll use two different images layered in order to define the heat map and we'll add the second one, which will be our rock surface. And as you can see, of course, we displace it with the uh, with the uh, noise, with the uh, not, not the noise, but the, uh, this uh, surface here, which is way too strong because it's black and white mostly. So we need to reduce it, maybe change it to um, overlay first, and then change the opacity to 3%. And now we have our rocks appearing only where we want them. So the whole terrain now is uh, ready to receive the its textures. Uh, what we'll do first is add the water plane so same size as the terrain 50 meters and uh, we'll place it let's call it water 50 okay and let's move it in place uh, not sure it covers the right area. This should cover the right area, so we'll need to move the camera up and then the water plane up a bit. The idea is to show that the water is going on the other side of the drain, so that 
Let's find the angle. That should be fine for us. Maybe move uh, the uh, daylight a bit again. Rotate to create more uh, shadows here. And that is the end of the first part of this tutorial. So what we have seen today is how to create a terrain in a world uh, creator uh, to fit a small scale environment, how to layer our terrains in Octane Render, and how to go back and forth from world creator to Octane Render and Cinema 4D in order to adjust uh, the terrain uh, the way you want. This is perfectly possible by reloading the maps uh, as you wish. This is uh, uh, all for today. The next step will be adding nice surfaces to this and uh, to do so we'll use mega scans. Let's see you for the next uh, tutorial and uh, hope you've uh, learned a few things today.